to Ephesians, the fourth chapter, and the 22nd verse. It says that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. May the Lord add blessing to the reading of his word. We're going to read some more verses there, so keep your Bibles open. But for a few moments today, y'all going to pray with me today? I, I really need your prayers today. My subject today is, I'm not going to ask you to turn to your neighbor and repeat this, but my subject today is, take off your clothes. Take off your clothes. I ask the Lord, are you for sure you want me to give that subject? But it is time that we take off our clothes. Take our clothes off. This word of God in the book of Ephesians is a book that is filled with possibilities. And it's filled with great words regarding unity. I chose the subject, take your clothes off. Have you ever seen someone who had on clothes that were too big? They did not fit. They were loose. They were almost empowering, over, overpowering them. Uh, their clothes were not proper. Have you ever seen someone who uh, clothes were not becoming of them? They were too loud. You can see them coming down the street clothes are screaming uh, at you. Then you have those who have clothes that are too tight. It look like they glued the clothes on them and you're trying to figure out how did they get the clothes on and Lord have mercy and how are they going to take them off. Clothes represents who we are when we want to go to certain events, we put on certain clothes. When we want to go to special events, we put on special clothes. When we want to go to the club, we put on club clothes. When we go to church, we don't put on those club clothes, but we put on church clothes. Y'all not going to work with me on today. When I was growing up, we had play clothes and we had church clothes. When we had church clothes, we would have to take the church clothes off before we could play. We could not play in our church clothes because we didn't have too many church clothes, and those clothes were for next Sunday. So we had to make sure that we had the right clothes on. The Bible instructs us regarding making sure that we are properly clothed. I used to watch my daughter, and she would run in track and field, and, and she would wear certain clothes for her track uh, appearance and when she was in high school she wore loose clothes but when she got to college she wore those real clingy clothes and, and she would come home with those clingy clothes on and I would tell her girl go somewhere and put some clothes on <laughs> and she would tell me daddy I got clothes on I said well those clothes are not the right clothes because those clothes are for track and running and they're not for walking around the house. Clothes gives us a proper attitude. It's something that when we put clothes on, we put a new suit on or new dress and we ex accessorize it and we get everything right, we just feel empowered, we, are, we walk straight, we, we, we're looking good, we, we got it together, amen. People know you got on a new suit because and you can't even stop smiling because you ain't had a suit for 20 years and now you got on a suit, amen. And you're looking good. It provides attitude for us. Uh, clothing is a multi-billion dollar industry. Uh, the athletes today wear clothes. They can't wear the other competition clothes. They can only wear the clothes that they are endorsing because those clothes are bringing them money. Well, in our lesson today, in the fourth chapter of Ephesians, I said, 
God, which chapter should I preach from? And he says, preach from the chapter that transforms and, and causes us to do the things that the book of Ephesians declares. The book of Ephesians declares that there is unity. It's preaching to the church, to the church of Ephesus. And his emphasis is on unity. And he is preaching chapter number one. He talks about the body. He talks about how that the body, we are one body. We are in Christ Jesus. In the second chapter, he talks about that we are the temple of God. We are the God's temple. And as a result, we have to carry ourselves a certain way because we are in Christ. Not Christ in you, but you are in Christ. And because you are in Christ, you are now the mystery. In chapter 3, he talks about the church being the mystery. We are the ones that Jesus died for. Jesus died so that we can live. He instructs us and lets us know that we are somebody in Christ Jesus. And because we are somebody in Christ Jesus, we make it to this fourth chapter. And in this fourth chapter, he says that because you are in Christ Jesus, you must walk worthy of the vocation. You must walk worthy of the calling. You are no longer the old man, but now you are the new man. And so he tells us that the way that we walk is with meekness and with long suffering and with forbearance and we're forbearing one another. And when people do us wrong, we still love them and we look for the good versus looking for the bad because we have to walk out this vocation. Many times people, when they come to Christ, they say, well, I don't have to do anything. But he shows us in the word of God that we've got a job to do. And that is, we've got to walk out the calling that God has called us to, and he says, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit. And I saw that and I got excited because the God that I serve, he sent his son, Jesus Christ. And because we're in Jesus Christ, he says, there is one Lord, there is one faith, there is one baptism, there is one body, there is oneness, there is unity. And that's what I love about the Lord because many times people are trying to be on one accord and we are not even one accord on the basic biblical doctrines of the word of God. You've got to be careful who you connect yourself with. You have to check them out and say, who do you say Jesus Christ is? Because I believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins and because he died on the cross and rose again, I have eternal life. So he lets us know that there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. There is one God and the Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. So he lets us know that we are connected together. We are walking in unity. I'm going somewhere today. He lets us know that we've got to walk worthy. We've got to endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit. And then he tells us, he says, I don't want you just to do that, but I've given you apostles. I've given you pastors. I've given you evangelists. I've given you teachers. I've given you, my God, uh, people after my own heart that they might equip you, that they might perfect you, that they might bring you into the knowledge of Jesus Christ for the work of the ministry. He says, I'm doing all of that so that you will be one. And after he talks about being one and walking in the fullness of Christ Jesus, he says that we are to speak the truth in love. Can I talk to you for just a minute? People don't like the truth today. They want you to sugarcoat. They want you not to tell them the truth. But notice he speaks to us and tells us that if we're going to be one, we have to tell the truth. The book of Proverbs tells us you have to be careful of the one that talks to you real nicely and my God and kisses you my God and tells you all nice things all the time but he says a true friend will tell you the truth a true friend will tell you what is right and what is wrong and as a result he's letting them know that I'm trying to get you to the place of oneness and he says because there are many enemies there are craftiness that are about he says that we must speak the truth in love from the whole body, fitly joined together. My God. And I begin to think about, God, what are you trying to say? He says that we're all in this thing together. We're all working together. And because we're all working together, he tells us that we've got to take off of our clothes. We've got to take our clothes off once and for all. We have been saved. And many times when we get saved, we go right back into the same old thing. But he tells us three things. He says, put off or take off. He says, put on or put on. 
And then he says, put away, Lord have mercy. And I said, now that'll preach right there. First of all, we've got to take off. We've got to take off the things that will cause us to not walk in unity. We've got to understand that the Bible, he says in that 17th verse, he says, you cannot walk as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Before we can take off, we must first take off in our mind. We must put off the old man. The new life in Christ requires some action on our part. I know they told you that once you get saved, you don't have to do anything but come and shake the preacher's hand. But the Bible instructs us and Paul tells us that we've got to walk worthy of the vocation. We've got to do some things. In order for unity to come forth, there are some things that we must do. I don't know about you, but I'm seeing disunity in the home. I'm seeing disunity in the church. I'm seeing disunity even in ourselves. I ask the question, what must we take off? We must put off the former conversations of the old man. We must understand that the old man, hallelujah, it is counted dead, but we must cause the old man to die daily. I told the story about a year ago, and I think I'll tell it again because I'm losing my crowd on the day. But there was a man. There was a man that saw his friend, and he saw his friend. And when he saw his friend, he asked him, he says, come on, I want to take you to my house because I see that you are down and things are not going well. And so he put him in his limousine and he took him to his house and he says, go on up there and there's a change of clothes for you. You can get cleaned up and come on down and eat. And the, and the scripture and, and the story goes on to say that the man came down and he began to eat and the a man saw that the man was fidgeting and he was moving all around. Y'all heard the story. Come on and go with me. And the man was fidgeting and as the man was fidgeting, the man said, what's going on? All of a sudden he smelled something and he says, the man didn't smell right. He says, didn't you wash up? He says, yeah, I washed up. He says, well, where's your old clothes? And he opened up his clothes, and he still had his old clothes on. Even though, my God, he had washed up, his old clothes were still there. He didn't take off his clothes. What I'm trying to get you to see that many times we come into the body of Christ, we come into church, and we're doing the things that we need to do, but there are still some things that God is requiring that we take off. If we're going to have the unity in the church of God, if we're going to do the things that we need to do, there are some things that we need to take off. And he tells us the number one thing that we need to take off that causes us to not have unity is lying. He says, take off lying. And I said, oh, my God, what is lying? And lying is, my God, not telling the truth. Lying is, my God, facading and making it seem as if something is and it is not. But he says, take off lying because lying will cause, my God, us to not trust one another. Lying is a foundation that will sink every time. If there ever was a time that we needed to trust one another, now is that time. And so he says, speak truth in love. Don't lie. My God, I had a cousin that called me last night and he was trying to get my my God, he was trying to get my understanding of something and, and he says, well, how do, you, how do you think it is? And I said, oh Lord have mercy, should I tell him the truth or not? And I began to tell him the truth and I said, man, it's good. It was, it was uh, something that he's trying to do. I said, it's good but I said, but it needs something else. I said, I'm just trying to help. He said, man, that's why I called you. I called you because I knew that you would tell me the truth. There comes a time when we've got to look for people to tell us the truth because our soul our soul is in balance I had another man stop by my house yesterday and he was talking and we, I was encouraging him he was telling me the things that he's going on in his family and how his young daughter tried to commit suicide just a few weeks ago and I began to tell him the truth I began to tell him man you've got to establish boundaries in your home you've got to begin to walk in love you've got to begin to walk in the truth and you've got to come together as a family and you've got to seek the things of God you've got to understand that you are fitly joined together and we're saying well we'll just let the children be children but now is not the time to just let the children be children we have to instill the principles of God's word in our children even today because they are fighting against wickedness in high places they're fighting against the world and we've got to let them know that Jesus is the only answer the truth will set you free so as I began to look at that he began to tell them that if you're going to walk you cannot walk as if you walked when you were old and isn't that how it happens today? 
That when we find ourselves in struggles, when we find ourselves in tests, we always seem to revert back to what we know. But there comes a time that we've got to put it away once and for all. We've got to put away lying. And then it says, put away anger. Don't we see a world that's filled with anger today? It's a world that is on the rampage. It's a world, my God, that if they get upset, my God, the next thing you know, they want to shoot someone. But we have to understand that he says to be angry and sin not. What does that mean? It means that I can be angry. Lord and mercy for Jesus even got angry in the temple. My God, the Bible says he turned over some tables and he got everything in order because he understood that my house should be called a house of prayer. And what am I saying to you today? Don't get upset with the people, but get upset with the devil. Get upset with the devil that is working through the people. Begin to rebuke the devil begin to speak the truth in love because he's telling us we've got to put off we've got to put off anger and as we put off this anger he tells us he says and sin not and then he says neither give place to the devil and finally he tells us he says him he that used to steal don't steal anymore lord have mercy and i said god what are you trying to say there he said don't steal and I said, all right. But then he began to tell me that many times we steal when we have something to give and we don't give it. You don't hear me on today. We have love. We have the answer to share with mankind. But yet and still we hold it unto ourselves. We hold it in the ministry. God is calling for us to work together in unity, to work together, fitly join together. He's calling for the church. And the church is to let the sin of anger and let the sin of stealing be put away from us. And the reason he's telling us that is because we have to put on the new man. Now, as I look at this passage of scripture, I'm getting loud and I didn't mean to get loud today. Uh, but uh, we've got to understand that if we're going to put off, we cannot just put off what we must put on. Now, how do we put on? He tells us, he says that we've got to renew the spirit of our mind. Do you realize our mind is where the battle is? The mind is selfish. The mind is self-centered. The mind is self-seeking. The mind is centered on this world. The mind is centered on the flesh. The mind is centered on this life. We are blinded in our mind, but he tells us that we've got to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. We've got to first understand that our mind must be transformed. I can't think about the things that I used to think about. Our mind must be in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. As I look at this passage of scripture, I understand that the Bible, they used to tell us that we've got to put off sin. We've got to put off the works of the flesh. And then they used to tell us that we've got to put on sanctification. We've got to put on the whole armor of God that you be able to stand. They used to tell us that you've got to put on the spiritual strength. You've got to put on humility. And he tells us in the word of God that we must understand that we have no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. When we take off and we put on, we become more like Christ Jesus. So he says, and be renewed in the spirit of the mind. Can I tell you something today? You can't always be watching everything, my God, because it will terrify your mind. Your mind will become like what you look at. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Isn't it true that what we eat is what we become? Oh, yes, I was listening to an athlete yesterday, and he was talking about how he is able to extend his career by what he eats. He eats the proper foods, and as he eats those proper foods, he's able to be, to, to, to be the athlete that he needs to be. Well, it's the same way as we read the word of God, as we cause our mind to come into compliance with God's word. What we read is what we become. What we see is what we become. And so he says here, let your mind be renewed. And as I look at this passage of scripture in the book of Colossians, the third chapter, he speaks to us and he tells us that the old man in the fifth verse, he says, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil concoptions and covetousness, which is idolatry for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children 
of, obedience, of disobedience. Can I tell you today that all of that is talking about is all of the things that are going on today, all of the sexual, my God, perversions that we're seeing in the world today. He says that you used to walk in those things. We have to let people know what is wrong and what is right. But he says, but now put off of these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another. Doesn't this sound like Ephesians? Seeing that you put off the old man and his deeds and have put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. He wants us to be a new man. And as I looked at that, I began to say, God, what are you uh, trying to say? And he says, he told me, he took me to the 11th chapter of John. And in the 11th chapter of John, there was a man that had died. And his name is Lazarus. And Lazarus had died. And when Lazarus died, he died, my God, an early death. He died an unexpected death. And the Bible says that when he died, his family cried because they had called on Jesus. But the Bible says that Jesus came to him on the fourth day. And when he came to him on the fourth day, the Bible says that Jesus asked for where Lazarus was. And the Bible says that when Jesus saw him, Jesus spoke to him and called him and said, Lazarus, come forth. And as I began to look at that, I began to see what was Jesus doing. Jesus was calling for the new man. Jesus was not calling for the old man, but he was calling for the new man. He was calling for the spiritual man. And what I'm speaking to you today is that many of us are still walking after the old man. We have not put the old man away. And you say, well, how do you know that, preacher? Because the Bible says that when Lazarus came and he came forth, the Bible says that Lazarus was still bound with his grave clothes on but Jesus spoke to them spoke to the people and as he spoke to the people he began to tell him loose him and let him go you don't hear me on the day he was not necessarily talking to Lazarus but he was talking to the people that were around him notice we're talking about unity today we're talking about being on one accord and what happens when we see people fall into sin we see people fall from the works of my God of God and we begin to talk about them verses beginning to seek them out and beginning to pray for them and beginning to encourage them and cause them to come back to the place where they're walking in fellowship with God and they begin to ask the Lord to forgive them of their sins. This is a day that we must understand that we are fitly, my God, joined together. We are a body of Christ. We are one body. We have one Lord. We have one faith. We have one baptism. We're all baptized into the burial, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And what did the people of God too. When they saw Lazarus, the Bible says that they ripped off the clothes of Lazarus. What I'm trying to get you to see is that it's time for us to take our clothes off. It's time for us to take off the things that we need to take off. Those things that are prohibiting us from walking in the place that God has established for us. We are in the summer months and I know you want to take some clothes off. My God, but we've got to take off the spiritual clothes. We've got to take off the lying. We've got to take off the anger. We've got to take off the malice we got to take off the wrath. My God, we've got to take off the lying. We've got to take off the stealing. But then he says we've got to put on. We've got to put on forgiveness. We've got to put on love. We've got to put on meekness and temperance and all of these things so that we will be the people of God. Take it off today, saints. We've got to take it off, my God. Those things that would cause us, my God, to not walk in unity. When we see our brother, when we see our sister, my God, and our brother and our sister don't want to speak to us, we've got to go out of our way. Lord have mercy to speak to them, to let them know that I love you, man. Lord have mercy. Forgive me if I wronged you. Forgive me if I've done wrong because it's coming to the end of time. It's coming to the last days. It's coming to the time where he's telling us to put off, to take away, to cause those things that will pull us down. We've got to take them off. You're waiting for your brother. You're waiting on your sister. You said one day when I get it all together, but how many know it makes it takes a decision. It takes a decision it takes the time where we say, God, I'm giving it all to you. Once you take it off, he says, put it on. And once you put it on, then he says, put it away. Don't look at it no more. Throw it away. 
get it out the closet. Lord have mercy. You know those clothes too, my God, they're too, too small. Lord have mercy. You still got them in the closet thinking that you're going to put them on one day. And you walk by and your closet is full of clothes. Lord have mercy. But you need to get rid of them. You need to let them go. You should not be named among the brethren. Some things should not be named among the brethren. And as we see in the word of God, he's encouraging us because he understands that if we walk in unity, if we walk in the spirit of love, if we take off and put on, then in the fifth chapter, husbands can love your wives. Lord have mercy, wives can love your husbands. If we take off and put on, Lord have mercy, children can obey their parents, as he says in the sixth chapter. If we take off and put on, Lord have mercy, we can put on the whole armor of God, that we will be able to stand against the wiles, against the strategies, against the plans, against the plots of the enemy, for the devil is trying to destroy us. But if we take off, Lord have mercy, if we show God, Lord have mercy, as he told him in the word of God, if we go all the way back to Adam and Eve, they had took off, Lord have mercy, but God clothed them in righteousness. He clothed them in peace. And that's what God wants to do. You're trying to do it on your own. You're trying to put it together. Lord have mercy, for the Bible says they realized that they were naked. They realized, my God, that they were naked, but the only one that could clothe them was God. What am I trying to say? You can take it off, but it's only God that can put it on. It's only God that can help you. It's only God that can keep you. It's only God that will instruct you how to live. You can't do it by yourself. I tried to be saved. I tried to do it, but you can't do it by yourself. But when you submit yourself, when you give yourself over to God, when you say, God, it's no longer I, but it's you, the Christ, that lives on the inside. I am now in Christ, and if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things, all things, all things. Hallelujah. All things are become new. Take your clothes off. Take them off today and let him clothe you. Let him clothe you in his love. Everybody standing. Lord Jesus. God, I praise you. God, I honor you. The spirit of unity. The spirit of unity. The spirit of unity. The spirit of unity. You know how we get unity? We get it by loving one another. We get it by obeying God's word. We get it by renewing our spirit in our mind. Do you realize that the devil speaks to us? He talks to us and tells us that nobody loves us. He speaks to us and tells us, well, you know, you might as well give up. But you have to understand that you, when you put on the whole armor of God, you will be able to stand against the enemy. Take off and put on. Notice here, he tells us to take off. Some things he will not take from us because if he takes it from us, we're going to go looking for it. It's just like when my wife used to set things out that I wanted. She would set it out for the trash. And I would pull out and I would see it was in the trash. I would secretly get it and put it in my car. And next thing you know, it comes popping up because I was not willing to give it up. But once I give it up, it's gone. I don't have access to it. I can then begin to put on what I need to put on. Take off what God tells us to take off. The lying, the anger, the stealing, the backbiting, all of these things. And notice he climaxes it in the last verses of that fourth chapter. And he tells us to put on forgiveness, and to put on all of these things that will help us to take off malice and to put on love. You know what malice is? 
Malice is that thing that you harbor. You get become angry and you harbor and that thing becomes bitter. And every time you see that person or that thing, it, it just does something to you. Or should I say, as the pastor say, it do something to you. And you wonder why you get mad because there's something that's down there that you have not put away. You have not taken out. Now notice it's the spirit of God that helps us to take it out. He says endeavoring to keep the spirit of unity. So there are some things that you have to do. We, are, we have unity, but we have to work towards it. It's just like in marriage. You got to work towards unity. You got to work toward it. I remember the greatest advice that my dad told me. You remember that advice, Dad? He told me that there are some things that are not that important. If it don't hurt, do it. I'm looking straight ahead. <laughs> Unity is the goal. And the enemy wants us to not walk in unity. He doesn't want the church to walk in the unity. Because if the church walks in unity, the church is going to grow. He doesn't want the family to walk in unity. Because if the family walks in unity, the family will grow. So if he can't cause, because he teaches all of that, when we look at the fifth and the sixth chapter of Ephesians, he teaches all of that. That we're as husbands and wives, we're to love one another. Then if we love one another and we love our children, then our children will want to obey the parent. They will want to honor the parent. But we have to put away the world, put away the world system, establish boundaries in our home. He gives us the message. He gives us and shows us how to walk this thing out. I submit to you today that God loves us and even tells us that unity is brought forth by submission. As we submit to God, he submits to us. As we submit to one another, each one submits to the other, which causes us then to walk in love. And as we walk in love, we are able to do what God has called us to do. Truth. The definition of truth. One person said, psychologist says a, a truth is what I feel. Accountant said truth is what I make it to be. Lord have mercy. But truth is what God's word says. Speak the truth in love. Let us walk in love today, saints. Let us take off the things that we need to take off and let us put on the things that we need to put on. Lifting your hands up to the Lord. Father God, we thank you and we bless you. We praise you today for your goodness and mercy. Thank you, O oh God, because you have simply given us a simple word today that we have the power to take away and to shake the devil off. Even as you told, we see in the word of God, Paul, when he was struggled and he was bitten by the snake, Lord, he simply shook it off. Even though the enemy had bitten him, even though that snake had bitten him, he shook it off. And when he shook it off, he shook it off into the fire. There are some things, oh God, that we still are holding on to. Some things that we have not let go of. Some things of the past. Some hurt, oh God, some failures. Lord, some insecurities that we have still not taken them off. And as a result, we're still not walking in the place that you've established for us. But God, I'm hearing your word, oh God, that we will call upon the name of the Lord. We shall be saved. We shall be delivered. We shall be set free. And God, we thank you for your delivering power. We thank you, Lord, that you have called us even in your word in the book of John, the 17th chapter. You says as you and the Father are one, you pray that we would be one. And Lord, that we would walk in the purpose, that, that one purpose, and that is that we would obey you. And God, as we obey you, as we put away the things that you have called us to put away, lying and anger and stealing and not doing and giving the best that we can give, Lord, many of us are holding back when you have told us, you have told us to obey you. But we still, oh God, will say, well, I'm only going to do this. I'm only going to do that. But, oh God, when we totally give in to you, and we totally put it away, and we totally put on you, oh God, there will be deliverance in our home. There will be deliverance on our job. There will be deliverance in our soul. 
there will be deliverance in our church. And God, we thank you, oh God, that it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by your spirit. Somebody is battling today. Someone is in the struggle of their life. It took everything within them to come to the house of the Lord. But Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you, oh God, that you have empowered us. And many times we say we can't do it, but we can do it. Oh God, if we would only trust you, if we would only obey you, if we would only give you our all. And Lord, we lift our hands in the sanctuary today. And we ask, oh God, that you would help us today. That you would empower us, oh God, to do what you have called us to do. We thank you for your deliverance, God. We thank you for your set freeing power in the name of the Lord Jesus. And we decree it. It is done in Jesus' name. And we thank you for it. 